Welcome back to modded Mass Effect. Uh, we are finally on the Normandy and I'm gonna do a quick round and talk to our people before we go and find uh, Liara. So let's talk to Joker. Commander, something you need? How's the Normandy performing? Is she everything they said she'd be? She's the best ship in the fleet, if you've got a pilot who knows how to handle her. Balance isn't what you'd expect. Takes a while to get used to that oversized drive core we got stuffed in the back, and her power can sneak up on you if you're not careful. The Normandy's probably too much ship for your average Alliance pilot, Commander. Lucky for you, I'm anything but average. How's the Normandy performing? Is she She's the balance. The Normandy's Oops. probably too much ship for your average Alliance pilot, Commander. Lucky for you, I'm anything but average. I like to know my crew. Mind if I ask you a few questions? I can see where this is going. You did a background check on me, didn't you? Well, I'll tell you the same thing I told the captain. You want me as your pilot. I'm not good. I'm not even great. I am the best damn helmsman in the Alliance fleet. Top of my class in flight school, I earned that. All those commendations in my file, I earned every single one. Those weren't given to me as charity for my disease. I can't have you on this ship if you're going to infect my crew. <laughs> infect the crew? Oh, man, you have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? Okay, I've got Vrolix Syndrome, brittle bone disease. The bones in my legs never develop properly. They're basically hollow, too much force, and they'll shatter. Even with crutches and my leg braces, it's hard to get around. One wrong step and crack! It's very dramatic, but I've learned to manage my condition, Commander. Put the Normandy in my hands and I'll make her dance for you. Just don't ask me to get up and dance unless, you know, you like the sound of snapping shin bones. Why does everyone call you Joker? It's a lot shorter than saying Alliance Flight Lieutenant Jeff Moreau. Plus, I love to make little children laugh. I was just thinking how much you remind me of Santa Claus. Look, I didn't pick the name. One of the instructors in flight school used to bug me about never smiling. She started calling me Joker, and it stuck. Uh, okay. Why didn't you ever smile? Hey, I work my ass off in flight school, Commander. The world's not gonna hand you anything if you go around grinning like an idiot. By the end of the year, I was the best pilot in the academy. Even better than the instructors, and everybody knew it. They'd all got their asses kicked by the sickly kid with the creaky little legs. One guess who was smiling at graduation. Ah, uh, we got that one. Uh, I think that's it. I mean, in, in Mass Effect 1, you can't really talk too much with Joker anyway, so... I have to go. Alright, see ya. He evolves during the games. Okay, let's talk to our crew real quick. Oh, we talked with um, Pressler already. Okay, that's a codex entry. That one? Okay. Alright, so I guess we can talk to pretty much everyone down there. I don't think there is much in the captain's cabin, but let's have a look. Okay, personal manual. Let's grab all those codex entries that we are not reading. <laughs> okay, let's talk to Caden. Uh, Anything you need, Commander? What's your opinion on the last mission? I don't see how we could have done things any better. At least not without getting to Eden Prime sooner. And we were on the scene faster than any other Alliance ship could have been. Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? I've wasted enough of your time for now, Commander. We'll have time for personal debriefings later. We'll talk another time, Lieutenant. Commander? Okay, I mean, we talked to Caden after the uh, first mission, so I don't think there is much that we can talk to. Except yes, for Commander? Is there something you need? Yeah, I'm I pretty sure go. we talked with her. Goodbye, Commander. About that. Um, so let's talk with 
uh, Rex and uh, Garrus. And Tali, of course. I don't think we have anything to talk about with Ashley, but... Commander? Do you have a few minutes to talk? One-on-one? -on -one? I'm sorry, Commander. I need yeah. to get my duty squared away. I wouldn't mind talking more later, though. Dismissed, Chief. Ma'am. Okay. Uh, so let's talk with Rex. Nice ship you've got, Shepard. What can I do for you? What's your story, Rex? There's no story. Go ask the Quarian if you want stories. Don't be an ass. Uh, yeah, okay. You Krogans live for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was fun. Yeah, we can stay a little bit positive when we talk with the crewmates, so... I heard about that. You know, they almost did the same to us. It's not the same. It's not, but we will we'll pretend it's, it's not. Seems similar enough to me. So your people were infected with a genetic mutation? An infection that makes only a few in a thousand children survive birth? And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? I suppose it isn't all the same. I don't expect you to understand, but don't compare humanity's fate with the Krogan. Subject. I mean, it's kinda, right? I was just making conversation. I wasn't trying to upset you. Your ignorance doesn't upset me, Shepard. As for the Krogan, I gave up on them long ago. The genophage infected us, but it's not what's killing us. Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Lots of species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. We're not settlers. We're warriors. We want to fight. So we leave. Hire ourselves out. And most of us never go back. What can you tell me about the genophage? Ask the Salarians if you want details. They made it. All I know, it makes breeding nearly impossible. Thousands die in stillbirth, and most never get that far. Every Krogan is infected, every one. And no one's rushing to find a cure. Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? When was the last time you saw a Krogan scientist? <laughs> you ask a Krogan, would he rather find a cure for the genophage or fight for credits? He'll choose fighting every time. It's just who we are, Shepard. I can't change that. Nobody can. Okay. So long, Rex. Shepard. We'll get more info after we uh, get Liara, I think. I think they placed him somewhere else. I mean, he was always standing at the Mako. Oh, the Mako! Alright, I, I did something with the text just for the Mako. I, I didn't just realize it just now. Oh yeah, it looks cool. Looks like uh, more like uh, Mass Effect 3 um, infantry colors. Huh. Nice. Okay, let's talk to Garrus. Thanks for bringing me on board, Commander. I knew working with the Spectre would be better than life at CSEC. Have you worked with the Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. At CSEC, you're buried by rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. Being a Spectre does have its advantages. Exactly my point. If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. 
But CSEC wants it done their way. Protocol and procedure come first. That's why I left. So you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things? There's more to it than that. It didn't start out bad, but as I rose in ranks, I got saddled with more and more red tape. CSEC's handling of Saren was typical. I just couldn't take it anymore. I hate leaving. You did the right thing. Life's too short to sit around waiting for things to happen. Yeah, you're probably right. Either way, I plan to make the most of this. And without CSEC headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. Okay. As long as you do your job well, you're free to go about your business as you see fit. Thank you, Commander. Okay. Uh, that's just a requisition officer. Hey, Commander. Looking for some extra supplies before you head out? I like the SR1 caps. They look uh, very detailed, too. What have you got? Whatever you want. Armor, weapons, mods. It's not standard Alliance issue, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Well, as long as you don't mind paying for it. Why should I pay you for my weapons and armor? My stuff doesn't come from the Alliance. I have to purchase it myself, and it's not cheap. Hell, the licenses alone have set me back more than I'd like. But no licenses, no goods. Without the goods, I'm out of a job. What are licenses? Why do you need them? Manufacturers sell licenses. Each license allows me to buy and sell a certain brand of products. I already have several basic ones, but you'll need to buy more if you want me to bring in different brands. Many of the best licenses are hard to get, but they're well worth the cost if you can find them. Yeah. What do the different manufacturers offer? There are too many for me to keep track of, but each license will explain what it's good for. How often will you get new items? Well, that depends on how many licenses you've purchased. But I'll rotate items on a regular basis regardless. And anytime we land someplace with a big enough port, I'll buy, sell, and trade whatever I can. Check back often. I need to move items quickly, so only the most basic items will be stocked consistently. Let's see what you've got. You bet, Commander. Okay, let's see if we got some licenses, but I don't think so now. Okay. Cool. Let's talk to uh, Adams and Tali. Oh, that looks really good. That looks really good. Hey, Commander, you know that quarry in Tali? She's been spending all her time down here asking me about our engines. I'll tell her to leave you alone. What? No, she's amazing. I wish my guys were half as smart as she is. Give her a month on board and she'll know more about our engines than I do. She's got a real knack for technology, that one. I can see why you wanted her to come along. Uh, I didn't. No, no, she's useful. I figured she'd be a real asset to the team. You've got an eye for talent, Commander. But I'm guessing that's not why you came down here. Fill me in on the IES stealth system. How does it work exactly? You can't hide a ship out in space. They emit too much heat and radiation. Too easy for sensors to pick them up. Unless you find a way to capture those emissions. So our stealth systems trap the energy we give off in storage sinks built into the ship itself. No emissions to give away our location. Eventually the sinks have to be vented. More than a few hours silent running and they overheat. Cook us inside our own hull. There's no way for anyone to detect us? A visual scan can still pick us up. Anyone looking out a window can see us plain as day. But you have to be pretty close to get an actual visual out in space. Most vessels rely on scanners. As long as the stealth systems are engaged, they can't see us. Not unless we accelerate to FTL speeds. Okay. Why doesn't it work with faster than light travel? Cranking up the FTL, blue shifts our emissions, pushes them into frequencies too high to capture in the sinks. As soon as we make the jump, it's like setting off a flare. Sensors can pick up our location whenever we enter or exit FTL flight, but for short-range missions, our stealth systems are amazing, and we've got the only one. Where else have you served, Adams? You name a class of Alliance ship, I've probably served on it. Everything from dreadnoughts and carriers right down to frigates like the Normandy. My last assignment was on the Tokyo. Only a cruiser, but she was a good ship. Couldn't hold a candle to the Normandy, though. I want to know more about the Normandy. 
She's the best ship I've ever served on. Probably the fastest vessel ever designed. And she's the only one using the new Tantalus Drive Core. What's so special about the Tantalus Drive Core? Proportionally, it's about twice the size of any other vessel. Not only are we faster, but we can run at FTL speeds longer before we have to discharge the core. Okay, I think that's it. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, Commander. Yeah, let's talk to Tully. Your ship's amazing, Shepard. I've never seen a drive cord like this before. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. I I'm mean, I'm starting to understand why you humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. I mean, I really like her uh, changed face so that you can actually see a part of her face. But uh, whoever created uh, that mod also liked her to have bigger boobs, I think, because they are definitely bigger than in a normal game. Uh, and I don't think you can uh, argument with like HD textures or something. I mean, yeah, you have HD boobs, but. But I like the. Again, I like the, the, the faceplate uh, and. You could see her a little bit in the in the original game, or you could make out some details, but I think whoever did this uh, um, made, uh, did a good job on on, on uh, yeah making her visible as a quarry. Let's say it that way. I don't like the idea of aliens studying the architecture of Alliance ships. We're on the same side here. My people have more reason to hate the Geth than anyone, remember? But you can't blame me for being a little excited. I never dreamed I'd get a chance to travel on a ship as advanced as the Normandy. I had no idea you found ship technology so interesting. It comes with being a Quarian. The migrant fleet is the key to the survival of my people. Ships are our most valuable resource. But we don't have anything like this. We make do with cast-offs and second-hand equipment. We just try to keep them running for as long as we can. Some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight from the Geth. Uh, even the, the face muscles are moving, so they did a good job with, with uh, not only putting like a, a static mesh, like a face mesh or texture there, it's, it's it's really moving like a normal character, so that's really good. I can't believe your fleet's still using ships that are three centuries old. They're constantly being repaired, modified, and refitted. They aren't pretty, but they work. Mostly. We've tried to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla. Grow our own food, mine, and process our own fuel. But some things we just can't make on our own. A patch to maintain the hull integrity requires raw materials we just don't have. That's why our pilgrimages are so important. Tell me about your people. Our lives aren't easy. Resources are scarce, and we are constantly on the move. Everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. There are 17 million quarians in the flotilla, and each of us relies on the others for survival. The bonds among my people are strong. Unfortunately, we have had to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. If our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed. In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. That's your government. The Conclave is our civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative to serve on the Conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, the captain has the final say. It's a tradition that dates back to the early days, when the fleet was governed by martial law. 
Fortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give them advice and guidance. So the ultimate power rests with elected officials? In practice, the Conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives. But in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. I want to know more about the Geth. I doubt I can tell you anything you don't already know. It's been almost three centuries since they drove my people into exile. All I know is the story of their origins. What they were when we created them, and how they turned on us. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean... I don't know if the, the mods for the other games that I uh, will install will show the other Koreans also like with a faceplate. I'm not sure. I have to see when, when I start those games then. Interesting. The Geth were originally created to serve as an automated manual labor force. Initially their intelligence was as limited as any VI. Over time, we made small modifications to their programming to allow them to perform more varied and complex tasks, bringing them closer and closer to true AI status. <coughs> How come the Council didn't step in and stop you? This wasn't true AI research. We may have been skirting the bounds of the law, but we never did anything that was actually illegal. The changes were so insignificant, so gradual, that we were able to control them. Or so we thought. But one thing we underestimated was the power of the neural network. A million Geth thinking simultaneously created an inherently unstable matrix. So the Geth share brain power? Many of the Geth's logic systems were designed to work in concert with other nearby Geth. Basically, the more of them you have in the group, the smarter they are. So there's some sort of group consciousness? No, nothing like that. They cannot share sensory data or information. Their programming cannot handle that much simultaneous input. Each Geth maintains an individual awareness and identity. The neural network only operates on a process-based level. It's basically the synthetic equivalent of a subconscious. But, when they're in close proximity, they can coordinate low-level functional processes, freeing up more capacity for original or independent thought. That doesn't make any sense. I'm probably oversimplifying. The Geth are incredibly advanced and complex creations. All you need to know is that they get smarter when they gather in large numbers. As we built more and more Geth, their effective intelligence became more sophisticated, more abstract. One day, a Geth began to ask its Quarian overseer questions about the nature of its existence. Am I alive? Why am I here? What is my purpose? As you can imagine, this caused a near panic among my people. I don't see what's so bad about those questions. The Geth were created to engage in mundane, repetitive, or dangerous manual labor. That's fine for machines, but it won't satisfy a sentient being for long. The Geth were showing signs of rudimentary self-awareness and independent thought. If the Geth were intelligent, then we were essentially using them as slaves. It was inevitable the newly sentient Geth would rebel against their situation. We knew they would rise up against us, so we acted first. A general order went out across all Quarian-controlled systems to permanently deactivate all Geth. The Geth responded to this order violently. You didn't really think they'd just let you destroy them without a fight, did you? The hope was that most of the Geth would still be little more than machines, incapable of organized resistance. But they had progressed much further than anyone anticipated. The war was long and bloody. Millions upon millions of Quarians died at their hands. 
In the end, we were forced to flee our own homeworld. We feared the Geth would pursue us, but they never came beyond the Vale. Now, we drift through space, exiled, searching for a way to reclaim what was once ours. Mm. Okay. You got what you deserved. We made a mistake when we created the Geth in the first place. But we did not make a mistake when we went to war against them. If we had not acted, they would have wiped us out. They're a synthetic life form. They have no use for organics. None. Why do you think they cut themselves off from the rest of the galaxy? Why do you think they've killed every organic being who's ever tried to contact them? They didn't kill Saren. What does that tell you? The Geth are not innocent victims in all this. They're the enemy. They want to destroy us. Not just the Quarians. All organic life. That's why they've joined up with Saren. And that's why we have to stop him. I want to know more about the pilgrimage. When my people reach maturity, we leave our birth ships and seek acceptance with a new crew. It's necessary to maintain genetic diversity among the fleet. But no ship wants to accept someone who will be a burden on them. So, to prove our worth, we embark on a pilgrimage. We set out alone, leaving the flotilla and our families behind us. We only return once we have found something of value we can bring back to the fleet. This is presented as a gift to the captain of the respective ship we wish to join. If the gift is accepted, we are welcomed into the crew. I can't believe they just send you off alone. It's not like they just cast us out. Before we leave, we are given lessons in how to survive outside the flotilla, and given gifts to help us on our journey. We also receive implants to fight off sickness and disease. Generations of living in an isolated and highly controlled environment have left our immune systems weaker than most. By the time we leave the fleet, we are well equipped for the pilgrimage. This is a rite of passage for all Quarians. If it were dangerous, our numbers would suffer. Virtually every pilgrimage ends with a triumphant return and the ritual presentation of the gift to one of the fleet's captains. Can a captain choose to reject the gift? That doesn't happen often. Most captains are eager to increase the size of their crew. It increases their own standing in our society. Even when a gift is not particularly valuable, the captain usually accepts it out of a sense of tradition. However, there is a stigma to presenting a substandard gift. It's not the best way to make a good impression on a new community. Most pilgrims don't return until they find something worthwhile. Okay. I want to talk about something else. Like what? Good, we got that one. I should go. See you later. I kind of miss those uh, interactions in, in Mass Effect 2 and 3. Uh, I think in Mass Effect 1 you get way more backstory and history of characters and the world. Considering two of the other ones, probably because it's already like you know, um, the world is already implemented and stuff. But still, uh, if you don't do that here, then you could miss some. Uh, well, not miss, but you maybe don't understand why some things are happening or why uh, some of the things uh, were happening and why. Uh, S certain cult cultures hate the other cultures and stuff like that. So I find it interesting to to get all this, even though I have played the the game before. It's still good to to get reacquainted with with all that info. So we talked to everyone now. Uh, it took us like half, half an hour. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna go and get uh, Liara. I'll probably check out the other planets first and then getting Leora. Ooh, okay, that's new. I like that. So I, uh, I think that's also more like, like quest markers or something like that that shows you where the main quests are in which systems and I really like that. Uh, that's cool. Also the, um, the galaxy looks a little bit more vibrant. It's also cool. Okay, so let's go to Liara's dig site.
Artemis Tau. Cool. Um, yeah, let's start with that. As far as I know, she's in, in the Knon in the Knossos sector, if I can remember correctly. So let's do those sectors first, and uh, we'll see what's happening. So, um, just so you know, guys, uh, as you probably have... Oh, oh, the glitter is back! If there is something there. Oh, that's nice. I missed that one. Nice, cool. Must be also a mod. Nice, nice, nice. So what I wanted to say is, uh, if you have watched my Blind Let's Play, you can probably guess uh, what will happen on Wormire. And who will maybe be on my crew and who maybe not, so I won't spoil it right now, but you can probably guess. Also, you will see who my uh, romance options are in all the three games. I won't say it, but uh, it, it will be, of course, visible. <laughs> Got a gas deposit. Ooh, Matrix Dragon recovered. Okay, I'm not gonna read that one, it's just that we need like 10 as far as I know. And we're gonna get those. Of course, too. As they are needed. Very, 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 very later. Okay, uh, Garrus should be okay already with electronics, and I think we need one one or two points in electronics to be maxed out. But we need the, the firepower, I guess. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna take Garrus for sure. In those early stages, we could also maybe go for someone else. Uh, but uh, let's take let's take the the main squad. Let's have a look here. Oh, that's right. Uh, I also have a mod that shows me all the, um, the possible uh, locations on the map, so you don't have to run around and search for them. Um, I consider that a, a good addition because you normally scan a planet before you go there, so everything that should be there should be already be scanned. And it was a little bit bothersome on the original game that you have to drive everywhere to get something so what i will do is i will get all the, that stuff and uh, then i'll get to that uh, exclamation mark uh, stronghold um if you don't like uh, in, the, in the coming videos if you don't like the exploration part i'll try to do a chapter if it's possible to just gather all the stuff before i go somewhere uh, so you can skip maybe the, 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 the chapters if you don't want to see that. But I will of course get everything, because uh, you get good uh, bonuses if you get everything. And also there should be infinite boost as far as I know on my uh, Mako. That's really cool. That's really cool. That saves such a long... Uh, that saves so much time. I mean, most of the territories you can't really do boost all the time anyway, but uh, in s on some planets it's it's really nice to have that, that option. Okay, so we got a deposit here. A large deposit. I think I also got a... Um, 
a mod that removes the the 300 item limit uh, that is in the game so uh, I don't know what what the new limit is but it should be more than 300 I don't know if it's infinite uh, in the inventory but uh, yeah I mean 300 is already like you know impossible like immersion wise so for me it doesn't matter that it's like uh, nearly infinite now and it saves some time with uh, you know it just saves a little bit time if you have to destroy stuff to to make room later in the game and, and that way you can if you want you can just sell everything at once or or do the um, the omni shell whenever you want you know and there's also not that it, there's also not the possibility that you'll have to destroy items because your inventory is full. So I, I see that as a good addition. I think I mentioned it in the, in the first video anyway, before I started this, this playthrough, that I... Oh, I think that's a level. Yeah. That I... Uh, I'm using mods, but I'll try not to use mods that... Uh, that are considered cheating, at least that I consider cheating for the game. Uh, so I'm not, you know, I'm not using mods that give me like one-shot abilities or something like that, or that help me skip storylines or whatever. Uh, that would I consider cheating, for example. So. Uh. Oh, I don't know. I guess we go here. Guess we go here, take that, take that, and then go. So yeah. And I really, really like that texture on the maker. It's more in line with the Alliance uh, color scheme. Let's say that. Right? But if you, if you have... So, um, something to say about the mods or so then uh, just post it in the comments I mean uh, you can check out my description of the videos because uh, I've posted everything there that is uh, used so you can see all the mods that I used there I'm not putting in the description of the mods because um, it would be too much in the description oh now let me check okay but uh, all of the mods that I'm using are on the Nexus site, so uh, if you search for the name that is in the, in the description, then you'll probably find it. And you can also see what the mod does and, and whatnot. Um, I mean, I've read through them, but, uh, you know, I don't know what every mod does, and I'm sometimes... If you see that for the first time and you haven't used mods before, then yeah, you, you see my genuine reaction because uh, most of the time, or I don't know what the mod does. I mean, I know generally what the mod does, but I don't know how it looks in game. Except for maybe if I saw some uh, screenshots from the mods on the Nexus side. But experiencing is something else, so I'm experiencing the, the mods for the first time. And so far, I really like them. Uh, they are really um, adding value to the game. I also bought, uh, just for fun, uh, I bought the, the versions of the game from, you know, uh, 2000, so the, the original, original game. And I also played it with, I think I played with Mail Shep uh, Paragon. Uh, the original games and uh, I'm pretty sure back in the time or like uh, 15 years ago whatever the first one was the graphics were good but uh, man even the legendary edition is like two levels higher <laughs> than the original original games but uh, yeah with the mods it's like another level even though we're playing, or I'm playing the, the Legendary Edition, it's still so much more, I would say. It's, it, sometimes it's just little details, you know? 
like the areas here or if you have like planets in, in the sky or something like that but it, it gives you a little bit of immersion a little bit more immersion into the whole um, uh, s into the whole gameplay so we leveled up uh, I'm gonna oops 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 oops, oops. Uh, okay, okay. Um, so I'm gonna check real quick what we have here maybe not while we have the, the hazard thing um, so I got four points with with Shepard. We we can't level up Intimidate currently. I think I'm gonna go for Unity. And we got four points with Garrus. Ah, there we go. So we need one more level up. So it was three. We need one more for the hard objects. Okay. That's fine. We can do that uh, uh, when he levels up next. Uh, Rex has already the heavy armor. That's cool. Let's give him advanced immunity and Krogon Battlemaster so he regenerates health more. And we're good to go to the to the main area. I already saw in the on on the radar that there are a lot of enemies. Or at least some. As you can see, probably by now I've also switched my camera to the left side. Uh, I think in the originals that I did, the original blind playthrough that I did, I had the camera on the right side and it uh, uh, you couldn't see the radar, which is now changed, of course. Uh, and because of that, you can't see the the weapon loadout. But basically, you can see the weapon that I'm using when the weapon is out. And since I'm playing an infiltrator, the the weapon will 99% be a sniper rifle anyway. So it's not that I will switch weapons a lot. Maybe using pistols from time to time, but yeah, that's that's probably it. Oops. There should be another one somewhere. Oh, there it is. Goodbye. Okay. Contacts, Commander. Uh, I don't think so. So we got a scimitar and another scimitar. Let me real. Let me check real quick. Yeah, scimitar is better. Let's see. Got, some, uh, got a high caliber barrel. Yeah, we don't really have stuff, so let's go in. Okay, we got some enemies there. Yeah, let's move in with our guys. Uh, if I can remember right, it should be that button and that button. There we go. Okay, he has his gun out. Countermeasure deployed. Now it gets fun. Come on. Look up. I'm gonna send. Go, go, go! Ah! Not 
that one. Okay, let's move. Let's move him here. Girls will get up later, I guess. <laughs> Oh, they're moving fast. Oh, okay. Also got that slaver there. Not this time. Got her. Got her. Okay, I'm gonna storm Rex forward there. Get him, Rex. Get him, Rex. I think they are upstairs there. You must die. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Rex. Since Garrus is sleeping, we're gonna do it ourselves. Go, go, go! Target not acquired. Okay, go. Come on. Shields disabled. Get him. Oh, shit. Really? Come on, get him. Where is that guy? Oh no. Come on, Rex, go, go, get go. it done. Lock on. Have to do everything myself, Rex. The range too there. rough. Really? Come on. Follow on me. me. Follow me, Rex. We're gonna get that. Ouch, 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 come on, Rex. Where's that guy? We got them all, Shepard. Uh -huh. Yeah, thanks, Garrus, for your help. Thank you very much. Come on, get up. Uh can we get that thing somehow? Oops. Yeah. I mean, we are full on medipacks anyway, so. Let's go up there. I think that was the slaver thing was, I think, I think it was um, the sister of Dentius. <laughs> Hard decryption. Okay, that's really hard. Um, oops. I think that would be the best option, maybe. Yep. Hurricane striker scimitar. Let's grab that one. That's maybe the best one. Oh. Come on. Ah, there we go. Hammerhead rounds, combat sensor. You discover evidence that the Asari leading the slavers and Nasana Dentius, an important ambassador on the Citadel, are sisters. You should turn to the Citadel and confront Nasana with this. Yeah. Ooh, I remembered well. Okay. Cool. I don't know, can we go up there? I guess we can. Or can we? Let's get moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we can get up there, but there is nothing here. Okay, yeah. Take him out! What? Yeah, really. Yeah. Oh, I saw it now. 
Ah, got it. So that should be the quest for here. It's fine. Uh, so we can go back to the Normandy, I would say. Yep. Then we can go to the next area. Let's see what's here. Maybe I see the, the bright star blinking again. Oh, okay. Arrows. Turian Insignia. Okay. That's also something we need for the quest. Nothing there. Nothing there. deposit and another gas deposit okay we are done here uh, let's go into a system where Liara should be I think the plan is called Therum or Cerosis or something yeah Therum okay yeah Therum oh there we go that sh it should be blinking yeah, there we go. Yeah. That's a big help. I mean, I'm gonna search anyway, but... It's a good thing that it's blink. Oh, I got it before it blinked, I think. <laughs> Medallion, okay, that's also cool. League of One. Uh, let's get the other... Um... Planet scanned. Nothing there. Gas deposit, okay. Nothing there, okay. Let's get Liara. And we also could get Tali, but as far as I know, there is one section that is really, really hard and I need people that have a lot of HP to survive or try to survive. I think that will be the first time that I will die in this insane playthrough. Because I remember that it was pretty hard at the start. Commander, I'm picking up some strange readings. Really strange, like off the damn charts. It looks like it's coming from an underground complex a few clicks away from the drop zone. Yeah, I don't think we can go in there. Alright, well, let's have a look at the map. Okay, there's pretty much nothing there. I'll try not to drive into the lava if possible, but... You know, stuff happens sometimes. <laughs> but I mean, it looks really... I, I can't remember if the Legendary Edition, because I played the, the original version too, and that's a lot of difference to the to the Legendary Edition, also uh, terrain-wise and stuff. But uh, I still think that we even got more details in this modern, modded version here. I'm not so quite sure if there's a certain mod or if it's like in, in a special one inside, but it, it looks like there is more going on. Oh yeah, okay. Geth incoming. Okay, 
it didn't do much damage. Let's go. I'll just have to check if it's really on insane. Yes, okay. Because I didn't do much damage to, to the Mako. No. I wasn't sure if I'm on insane or not. Did we get items? Oh, yes, we got items. Radioactive rounds, hammerhead rounds. Okay, let's have a look. I think I got the first aid kit from Dr. Michelle, so I'm gonna put that one on before I forget. Got armor plating, shield, toxic seals, shock absorbers. Yeah, he can, he can keep that one. Do we have a better armor? No, we don't. At least not currently. Uh, let's give him the shock absorber. Why not? Okay, so we got some enemies incoming over there. Okay, I already see them. Level up. Cool, cool, cool. Only a fool punches a knapsack in the mouth. We should sneak around and pull its tail. I mean, we could go from that side too, maybe, but I think we can't get through the door, so we have to go there anyway. There we go. Uh, some stranglers, I think, lurking around. Oh, there we go. Goodbye. Oh, there's another. Oh, I think there are two. Okay, let's see if there's some outside still. Oh, yeah, there. We go. Where are you? Oh, there we go. Okay, uh... I think we have to go here anyway. So let's park the Miku here. Yeah, okay. Let's grab that. Avenger 3, Hurricane 4. Okay. Shield battery. Let's look at... I think the Hurricane 4 is... No, it's not better. Okay. Okay. Avenger is better, though. Okay. What do we have here? We have chemical rounds. We have hammerhead. We have phasic. We have radioactive. Antipersonal are for organic. So that's... We don't need. Recoil. Damper. Heatsink. Sure, I mean, why not? And Rex. Chemical rounds, okay. High caliber, it's fine. Also got chemical rounds. And high caliber, okay. I think I saw one of them. Uh, yeah, it could be in this one. I think it's in the next one. Yeah, it's in the next one. Okay. So we got a gas inside here.
grab that. Oops. Assault rival, three shotgun striker. So is this where we came? No, this is where we have to go right Yeah, Okay. So if this is where we have to go, then the Mako is in the right position. We're just checking for loot. And probably some more gas. Oh, gas also there. Oh, loot. Yes. Sold sniper. Heavy armor human I can't use. Light armor I can use though. Okay, let's have a look here. We got Reaper 3. That's an upgrade. And Liberator is not really an upgrade. And there is a Geth in there. Okay, guys, go there. Nice one. Nice one, Garrus. Easy decryption. A Lance of Four, okay. And a Guardian Three. I think Guardian is a good one, I think. I'm gonna check it out. So the assault rival is something for Garrus probably. Oh, it's so weak. Why is it so weak? Well, no scorpion is better. I'm sure we we have everything now, so I mean I guess we could go in there, but not so sure if there is something inside. Oh, there is. Okay. Anti-personal rounds, radioactive rounds. Anti-personal is not that good. I rather have anti-synthetic ones. As long as the the toxic rounds are working on the Geth, it's fine. Okay. Let's continue. Okay, I already see enemies. Zoom in a little bit more. Okay, got that one. Let's go. Did we get loot? Yes, we did. Oh, interface three. Nice. We can use that on Garrus because his armor thing is bad, and he already went down before, so. Let's give him more health regen. Ooh, we got more incoming here. I think that we got a big dude over there. We got, oh, we got uh, shock absorbers, hardened weave, anti personal rounds. Why are we getting only anti personal rounds? Okay, let's do it. I'm 
want some anti synthetic bolts. Ouch. I'm more concerned about this big guy there. Oops. Overheating incoming. Okay. Got that one. Anti-personal rounds, of course. I mean we could put it on on the pistol before we do nothing. Can't do that. Uh combat sensor. Sure, why not? I'm not, I'm not using the, the pistol anyway. I also don't know if the... For example, the combat sensor is working if you have the item not equipped. Uh, doesn't really matter that much. Oops, my bad. Hello there. Goodbye. Don't see anything else. Okay. Let's move forward. Oh, is there something over there that we can loot? Hey everyone, sorry the game crashed uh, when I was recording. So what you missed is we just went up the hill and uh, we finished off some of the enemies. And to be honest, I don't want it to start the whole video again and do everything, so uh, we still have the main part uh, available, so we are still going for Liara. So uh, you didn't really miss much, uh, I don't even think we got any more uh, weapons and stuff, I just killed the, the Geth armature that was here. And yeah. I didn't die, which I thought I would, but anyway. It might have been uh, when I uh, said that I'm stopping the video that something messed up with OBS. Because after that I had a lot of uh, red errors on OBS with, with missing frames and stuff. So that could be the case. And then I think o uh, OBS crashed then. And yeah, I lost, I lost part of the video. But I realized it because I... <laughs> I didn't see uh, myself moving on my other screen, so yeah. Uh, I think uh, the cut content is like 10 minutes. So, like I said, no nothing major uh, has happened. We can still do Liara's thing. Aside from the Citadel, I mean. Okay. Okay, yeah, let's get Liara. I think we're gonna get company. I think the only thing that I got is um, anti synthetic uh, rounds. I think that I got before the, the video crashed, so that's the only new addition I think <laughs> that you guys missed. Sterile. Prothians sure build things homey. Okay. Now 
No panic, everything is under control. Hello? Could somebody help me? Please? Can you hear me out there? I'm trapped, I need help! So, you've probably already seen in this little sequence that um, I have, I'm using a mod that gives Liara her face from Mass Effect 3. So, uh, yeah, that's basically it. So I have a, I have it on all three uh, games the same um, face for Liara because it's like the whole game is like three years and her her looks change her looks changed a lot through the different parts and and the DLCs. So uh, I opted for keeping uh, the same uh, uh, look for Liara. So. Quit shouting! This place is crawling with Geth! Sorry, I am a little... Look, my name is Dr. Liara Tsuni. I am an archaeologist. Listen, this thing I'm in is a Prothean security device. I cannot move, so I need you to get me out of it, alright? Oh, and she's not part of the crew officially yet, so I can be renegade still with her. Your mother is working with Saren. Whose side are you on? What? I am not on anybody's side. I may be Benezia's daughter, but I am nothing like her. I have not spoken to her in years. Please, just get me out of here. How did you end up in there? I was exploring the ruins when the Geth showed up, so I hid in here. Can you believe that? Geth, beyond the veil! I activated the tower's defenses. I knew the barrier curtains would keep them out. When I turned it on, I must have hit something I wasn't supposed to. I was trapped in here. You must get me out, please! You shouldn't have been messing with technology you don't understand. I wasn't going to let the Geth capture me. Besides, I know how it works. Mostly. <laughs> Mostly. There is a control in here that should deactivate this thing. You'll have to find some way past the barrier curtain. That's the tricky part. The defenses cannot be shut off from the outside. I don't know how you'll get in here. Be careful. There is a Krogan with the Geth. They have been trying different ways to get past the barrier. Oh, I can already see Geth, so... I can also see a rocket trooper, so I'm gonna go for the rocket trooper. Nice one. Got you. There's another one over there. Ah, of course it puts the shield on right away. That's fine. I think we got the last one anyway. Before we activate the laser, I'm gonna go and get some loot. Got recall dampener, radioactive rounds, armor plating. Okay. Let's have a look here. Oh, and I think my, my guys leveled up, so that's probably also something that you guys have missed. Uh, I can show it real quick. Um, I think it's not in the video. Um, I upgraded everything on Spectre Training. I have Garrus uh, with Electronics, a Turian Agent, and Rex is also complete with Fitness and Krogan Battlemaster for the time being. Got a new assault rival. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the assault rival is not really better, but 
we can check it out. Yeah, it's not better. Okay, cool. Um, let's get that uh, thing going, that mining laser. And free Liara. Um, okay. Down, left. Okay, down, left, right, up. Second or third try is not that bad. Okay. Let's give it a little save here. How did you get in here? I didn't think there was any way past the barrier. The barrier fireball. We blasted through with the mining laser. Of course. Yes, that makes sense. Please, get me out of here before more Geth arrive. That button over there should shut down this containment field. Any idea how we get out of this place? There is an elevator back in the center of the tower. At least I, I think it's an elevator. It should take us out of here. Come on! I, I still cannot believe all this. Why would the Geth come after me? Do you think Benezia is involved? Saren's looking for the conduit. You're a Prothean expert. Obviously he wants you to help him find it. The conduit? But I don't know... What the hell was that? These ruins are not stable. That mining laser must have triggered a seismic event. We have to hurry. The whole place is caving in. Joker! Get the Normandy airborne and lock in on my signal! On the double, mister! Aye aye, Commander. Secure and away. ETA, eight minutes. If I die in here, I'll kill him. <laughs> I always wonder why Joker takes that long to get there. I mean, Normandy should be faster than eight minutes. this bastard okay yeah sure we don't have time to deal with this idiot charge <laughs> <sighs> I like your attitude okay get that one That one sneaked up on me pretty good. Whew. 
Okay guys, get there. Finish that guy off. Too close, Commander. Ten more seconds we would have been swimming in molten sulfur. The Normandy isn't equipped to land in exploding volcanoes. They tend to fry our sensors and melt our hull. Just for future reference. We almost died out there and your pilot is making jokes? Okay, he's a jerk. Sometimes jokers are real ass. Just try to ignore him. I see. It must be a human thing. I don't have a lot of experience dealing with your species, Commander. But I am grateful to you. You saved my life back there. And not just from the volcano. Those Geth would have killed me or dragged me off to Saren. What did Saren want with you? Do you know something about the conduit? Only that it was somehow connected to the Prothean extinction. That is my real area of expertise. I have spent the past 50 years trying to figure out what happened to them. I think the... The mod didn't change her face in this sequence. She, I think she looks like uh, Mass Effect 1 Legendary Edition, this one here, so I have to check if that's intended or not. Just how old are you exactly? I hate to admit it, but I am only 106. Damn! I hope I look that good when I'm your age. A century may seem like a long time to a short-lived species like yours, but among the Asari I am barely considered more than a child. That is why my research has not received the attention it deserves. Because of my youth, other Asari scholars tend to dismiss my theories on what happened to the Protheans. Is she already part of the crew? No, she's not yet. We haven't said that we want her on the crew, so I can't be renegade still. I've got my own theory on why the Protheans disappeared. With all due respect, Commander, I have heard every theory out there. The problem is finding evidence to support them. The Protheans left remarkably little behind. It is almost as if someone did not want the mystery solved. It is like someone came along after the Protheans were gone and cleansed the galaxy of clues. But here is the incredible part. According to my findings, the Protheans were not the first galactic civilization to mysteriously vanish. This cycle began long before them. Where'd you come up with this theory? I thought there wasn't any evidence. I have been working on this for 50 years. I have tracked down every scrap and shred of evidence. Eventually, subtle patterns start to emerge. Patterns that hint at the truth. It is difficult to explain to someone else. I cannot point to one specific thing to prove my case. It is more a feeling derived from a half century of dedicated research. But I know I'm right. And eventually, I will be able to prove it. There were other civilizations before the Protheans. This cycle has repeated itself many times over. We're in a hurry here. Get to the point. The galaxy is built on a cycle of extinction. Each time a great civilization rises up, it is suddenly and violently cast down. Only ruins survive. The Protheans rose up from a single world until their empire spanned the entire galaxy. Yet even they climbed to the top on the remains of those who came before. Their greatest achievements, the mass relays and the citadel, are based on the technology of those who came before them. And then, like all the other forgotten civilizations throughout galactic history, the Protheans disappeared. I have dedicated my life to figuring out why. Wow. Shut up, Benedict. 
most of the time it's not that harsh, so... I will go with it. You're not much of an expert, Doctor. The answer's been standing in front of you the whole time. The Protheans were wiped out by a race of machines, the Reapers. The... the Reapers? But I have never heard of... How do you know this? What evidence do you have? There was a damaged Prothean beacon on Eden Prime. It burned a vision into my brain. I'm still trying to sort out what it all means. Visions? Yes, that makes sense. The beacons were designed to transmit information directly into the mind of the user. Finding one that still works is extremely rare. No wonder the Geth attacked Eden Prime. The chance to acquire a working beacon, even a badly damaged one, is worth almost any risk. But the beacons were only programmed to interact with Prothean physiology. Whatever information you received would have been confused, unclear. I am amazed you were able to make sense of it at all. A lesser mind would have been utterly destroyed by the process. You must be remarkably strong-willed, Commander. This isn't helping us find Saren, or the Conduit. Of course, you're right. I am sorry, my scientific curiosity got the better of me. Unfortunately, I do not have any information that could help you find the Conduit, or Saren. Wow, okay. Looks like we wasted our time here. Wait, Commander. Saren might try another attempt on my life. I'd feel safer if you let me stay on your ship. Besides, my knowledge of the Protheans might prove useful later. And her biotics will come in handy when the fighting starts. Okay, she's now part of the crew, so we'll be nice. Good to have you on the team, Liara. Thank you, Commander. I am very grateful. Oh, I am afraid I am feeling a bit lightheaded. When was the last time you ate or slept? Dr. Chakwa should take a look at you. It is probably just mental exhaustion, coupled with the shock of discovering the Prothean's true fate. I need some time to process all this. Still, it could not hurt to be examined by a medical professional. It will give me the chance to think things over. Are we finished here, Commander? We're done. Go see the doctor. The rest of you, dismissed. Mission reports are filed, Commander. You want me to patch you through to the Council? Yep. Patch him through, Joker. Setting up the link now, Commander. We've received your report, Commander. I understand Dr. Tassoni is on the Normandy. I assume you're taking the necessary security precautions. Don't tell me how to do my job. You are free to act as you see fit, Commander. Our role is to offer guidance and advice. It's up to you if you're smart enough to listen. Okay, that's a little bit harsh, so goodbye. I don't need this. <laughs> Communications cut, Commander. <laughs> I always wanted to do this in my Paragon playthrough, my, my blind one. But now I can finally do that. Okay, let's have a quick save here. Uh, I'm gonna talk with my crewmates. Oops, we got some more... Lore bits. Okay, there we go. Another one. Let's see. Uh, I prefer gold to silver, you know, for my metal. I figured you'd recommend me for one since I uh, pulled your boots out of the fire. Saving my boots from burning lava is part of your job, Joker. We don't give medals to soldiers for doing their jobs. That figures. Just get me a nice card and a cake. No coconut, though. I hate that crap. So, Commander, why don't you tell me why you're really here? Uh, yeah. That's pretty much it. Yeah, we can do ship status report, I think. And just talk, probably. I like to know my crew. Mind if I ask you a few questions? <laughs> I can see where this is going. You did a background check on me, didn't you? Well, I'll tell you the same thing I told the captain. You want me as your pilot. I'm okay, not we got top one. of my class in flight school. I earned that. All those commendations in my file, I earned every single one. Those weren't given to me. I'm sorry, Joker. I didn't even know you were sick. I mean, I did, you mean, but... You mean you didn't know? Oh, crap. Okay, I've got Vrolich syndrome, brittle bone disease. The bones in my legs never develop properly. They're basically hollow, too much force, and they'll shatter. Even with crutches and my leg braces, yeah, I mean, it's hard got to get around. Already, One wrong step and we, crack. we chose that option. Very dramatic, now. but I've learned to manage my condition, Commander. Put the Normandy in my hands, and I'll make her dance for you. 
Just don't ask me to get up and dance unless, you know, you like the sound of snapping shin bones. I have to go. All right, see ya. I think we can Commander. do the, the ship something stairs, you maybe. How's the Normandy performing? Is she everything they said she'd be? She's the best ship in the fleet. If you've got a pilot who knows how to handle her. Balance isn't what you'd expect. Takes a while to get used to that oversized drive core we got stuffed in the back, and her power can sneak up on you if you're not careful. The Normandy's probably too much ship for your average Alliance pilot, Commander. Lucky for you, I'm anything but average. I have to go. All right, see ya. All right, see ya. Whatever. Okay. Uh, let's talk to our new crew member. Okay, we got nothing there to select. Oops. I think we got some stuff in here also, maybe? No? Oh, yeah, we do. Ooh, we got a Naginata. That's a good one. Naginatas are good ones. Okay. I don't think... Oh, we can... Don't think she has something more yes, to Commander? say. Is there something game, you need? As far as I know, yeah. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Hey, hey, Leara. Let's see if the face texture is now the one that I selected. Yes, it is. Okay. Maybe it's just that one sequence that's a bit messed up. Commander, yeah. are you coming to check up on me? Yeah, so we are gonna be friendly with uh, crewmates most of the time if I think that that I can risk it, uh, not being renegade, so... You look much better. How are you feeling? Dr. Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. You're in good hands. Dr. Chakwas knows what she's doing. I never properly thanked you for saving me from the Geth, Commander. If you hadn't shown up, I... I'm just glad we got there in time. So am I. I know you took a chance bringing me aboard this ship. I have seen the way your crew looks at me, they do not trust me. But I am not like Benezia. I will do whatever I can to help you stop Saren. I promise. Don't worry, Liara. I trust you. I know you won't let me down. It means a lot to hear you say that, Commander. Thank you. Tell me about yourself, Liara. Me? I am afraid I am not very interesting, Commander. I spend most of my time on remote digs, unearthing mundane items buried in long-forgotten Prothean ruins. Sounds dangerous. And lonely. Sometimes, I would run afoul of indigenous lifeforms or stumble across a small band of mercenaries or privateers. But I was always careful. Until the Geth followed me to Artemis Tau. I never found myself in any situation my biotics could not handle. As for the solitude, well... That is one aspect that most appealed to me. Sometimes I just need to get away from other people. You don't like other people? I suppose it comes from being a matriarch's daughter. People expected me to follow in Benezia's footsteps. They wanted me to become a leader of our people. Matriarchs guide their followers into the future. They seek the truth of what is yet to come. Maybe that's why I became so interested in the secrets of the past. It sounds so foolish when I say it out loud. It sounds like I became an archaeologist simply to spite Benezia. Okay, I think in that case we can probably do that. I bet that pissed her off. No. When I told her, she simply said, A daughter must rebel against her mother, Liara. It is part of the natural order. But there was more to it than that. I felt drawn to the past. The Protheans were these wondrous, mysterious figures. I wanted to know everything about them. That is why I find you so fascinating. You were marked by the beacon on Eden Prime. You were touched by working Prothean technology. Sounds like you want to dissect me in a lab somewhere. What? No! I did not mean to insinuate... Uh, I never meant to offend you, Shepard. I only meant that you would be an interesting specimen for an in-depth study. Uh, no, that's even worse.
Calm down, Liara. I was only joking. Joking? Oh, by the goddess, how could I be so dense? You must think I am a complete and utter fool. Now you know why I prefer to spend my time in the field with data disks and computers. I always seem to say something embarrassing around other people. Please, just pretend this conversation never happened. Do you know why Benezia joined up with Saren? I don't understand it. She was always outspoken about the need for the Asari to become more involved in shaping galactic events. Maybe she thought allying herself with Saren would somehow be for the greater good in the long run. At least I hope so. Any chance she's in this for power or personal gain? No, not the Benezia I knew. But I hadn't spoken with my mother in many years. She may have changed. I'd like to know more about the Asari. We were the first species to discover the Citadel. We were instrumental in forming the Council. And we always strive to be the voice of peaceful cooperation in galactic disputes. My people believe we are all part of a single galactic community. Each species contributes something to the greater whole. Although we seek to understand other species, it seems few of them seek to understand us. The galaxy is filled with rumors and misinformation about my people. And more. Like what? Most of the inaccuracies are centered around our mating rituals. My species is monogendered. Male and female have no real meaning for us. We still require a partner to reproduce. This second parent, however, may be of any species and any gender. I don't understand. Your species can mate with anyone? Mating is not quite the proper term. Not as you understand it. Physical contact may or may not be involved. But it is not an essential element of the Union. The true connection is mental. Our physiology allows us to meld with other beings. We can touch the very depths of their minds. We explore the genetic memory of their species. We share the most basic elements of their individual and racial identities. We then pass these traits onto our daughters. It is how we learn to grow as a species and how we develop a greater understanding of other races. What happens to your partner after the union? Every relationship is different. Some unions are a single encounter with both parents parting ways afterwards. Others can be more long term. Sometimes an Asari and her partner will stay together for many decades. You Asari live for a thousand years. What happens when your partner dies? Few sapient species live as long as my kind. We have learned to take a philosophical approach to our unions. We do not focus on the inevitable loss of our partners. Instead, we enjoy the time we spend with them. And even after they're gone, a part of them lives on in us. The union is a connection that transcends both time and space. Okay. Do you know who Matriarch Benezia chose as her partner? She rarely spoke of her partner. Though I know my father, if you want to use that term, was another Asari. Benezia never told you her partner's name? Union with our own kind is no longer common. Not for the purposes of reproduction. Most Asari believe it weakens our species. Asari daughters inherit racial traits from the father species. If both parents are Asari, then nothing has been gained. Or so conventional wisdom would hold. I am what is sometimes called a pure blood. Though no Asari would ever be cruel enough to say the word to my face, it is a great insult among my people. It is possible Benezia's partner was embarrassed by their union. She may have been too ashamed to publicly acknowledge me as her offspring. I'm gonna risk it. Why agree to the union if she didn't want any children? I cannot answer that. This is all speculation on my part. It is possible she wanted to be part of my life, but something happened to her before she had the chance. Benezia never spoke of her partner. Whatever happened, it caused her too much pain to dwell on it. She raised me by herself, though that is not uncommon. Many Asari raise their children alone, particularly if the father species is short-lived. Often the partner will pass on long before the child reaches maturity. Okay, we, we don't know who it is. Okay. I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. And again, uh, you get way more information background story in Mass Effect 1 than in the other two games. At least what I can what I can say. 
Okay, let's talk to Caden. I'm just gonna check if there's something to click on. No, okay. Commander, do you have a minute? I don't. I always make time for my officers. Off the record, I think there's something wrong here. This Saren is looking for records on some kind of galactic extinction, but we can't get backup from the council? Sorry, Commander. There's writing on the wall here, but someone isn't reading it. We've got our orders. Belly aching won't change them. I hear you. It, it just seems like a group that's been around as long as the council should see this coming. And it's funny, we finally get out here and the final frontier was already settled. And the residents don't even seem impressed by the view. Or the dangers. Well, he, he is kind of right. Well, well, you're a romantic. Did you sign on for the dream, Alenko? Secure a man's future in space? <laughs> yeah, I, re I read a lot of those books when I was a kid, where the hero goes to space to prove himself worthy of a woman he loves, or, you know, for justice. Now, maybe I was a romantic in the beginning, but I thought about it after brain camp. Uh, sorry. Biotic acclimation and temperance training. I'm not looking for the dream. I just want to do some good. See what's out here. Sorry if I got too informal. Protocol wasn't a big focus back in Bot. Mm, let's stay neutral. Tell me about it. Biotic acclimation and temperance didn't last past the airlock. To the kids they hauled in, it was brain camp. Sorry, hauled in is unkind. We were encouraged to commit to an evaluation of our abilities so an understanding of biotics could be compiled. <laughs> there are worse results of accidental exposure to element zero in the womb. Beats the brain tumors some kids grew up with. I heard all about that. How companies would arrange accidents to expose people to element zero. There was never any proof of that. It's not what happened in my case anyway. My mother was downwind of a transport crash. It was before there were human biotics, a little after the discovery of the Martian ruins. It only gets iffy around 63 when Kinetics was running out of first-gen subjects. Until then, they'd relied on accidentals. A bunch of guys in suits show up at your door after school, and next thing you know, you're out on Jump Zero. Hmm. Jump Zero is Gagarin Station, right? What's it like? Yeah, that's the official name. Biggest and farthest facility we had for decades, right on the termination shock, the outer edge of the solar system. It's where they did all the goose chase FTL research before we caught on to using mass effect fields. It was a sterile research platform when I was there. There were other kids in the same boat, right? At least you weren't alone out there. That's true. We did have a little circle that'd get together every night before lights out. We didn't have much to do, though. It was a research platform then, and Kinetics kept Jump Zero off the extranet to prevent leaks. I'm to get physical. You were all teenagers. I'm sure you found other ways to occupy the time. I'm not the sort who does that kind of thing, Commander. Not lightly, anyway. There was a girl I spent a lot of time with, but we kept our clothes on. Rana. She was from Turkey. Her family was very rich. But she was smart and charming as hell. Beautiful, but not stuck up about it. Like you, I guess. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sounds like she was special to you. She was. Maybe she felt the same. But things never felt together. Training, you know. You know of any intentional exposures for certain? No one knows. Doesn't mean they didn't happen. As big as the exposures were, it was hard to track down accidentals. It was different then. No one knew the potential, so there wasn't a lot of regulation. Anything Kinetics did was gold. I'm not saying they intentionally detonated drives over our outposts, but in retrospect, they were damn quick on the scene. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it, I guess. Jump Zero is a long way from home. What was it like? 
The grand gateway to <clears throat> humanity looks a lot better in the vids. Anyway, this was supposed to be a casual debrief, not a bull session about stuff that happened years ago. Uh, let's do a neutral one. We have to depend on each other in combat. I like knowing what kind of man I have at my back. I understand, ma'am. I won't let you down. You, uh, make a habit of getting this personal with everyone? To some degree. Of course. But I don't enjoy it with everyone. We'll talk again later. I'll, uh, I'll need some time to process that, Commander. But, yeah, I'd like that. Uh, yeah, okay. So, let's go down. Get the rest of the crew, and once we're uh, once I'm done with that, then I will end this episode. And decide what I will do in the next one. Uh, maybe we got some licenses. Looking for supplies? Let's see what you got. You bet, Commander. Let's see. Okay, we got no licenses there, so. I don't think Adams says much more, but we can talk. Something I can do for you, Commander. Yeah. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, Commander. But we can talk with Tali, I'm pretty sure. Oh, hello, Shepard. Like I need this. Are you okay? I don't know. Your ship is amazing, and your crew's been really great to me, especially your chief engineer. But I just sort of feel out of place. The Normandy runs so smooth, it feels like we're not even moving. And the engines are so quiet. How do you sleep at night? The silence wakes you up? Back on the flotilla, the last thing you want to hear is silence. It means an engine's died or an air filter shut down. I guess you don't have to worry about that here. But old habits die hard. But it's more than just a silence. This ship feels so empty. It's like half the crew is missing. Back home, I couldn't wait to go on my pilgrimage. I couldn't wait to get away from the crowds. Now that I'm out here, I kind of miss them. Sometimes we don't appreciate what we have till it's gone. That's true. I'm starting to wonder if that's what the pilgrimage is really about. It's given me a whole new perspective on my people and our culture. You know, there's always a few who go on their pilgrimages and never return. I always assumed something bad happened to them. But maybe they just wanted a different life. You do plan to return to the migrant fleet, right? I could never abandon my people, Shepard. I will go back eventually. But we have to stop Seren first. Otherwise, I might not have a home to go back to. True. Okay, we got that one. I should go. See you later. See you later, alligator. Uh, let's talk to Garrus. Commander, how are you? Why did you want to be a C-Sec officer in the first place? Hmm, that's a good question. There were several reasons, I guess. Such as? Like what? Probably the same as most officers. I wanted to fight injustice, wanted to help people. I guess my father had something to do with it, too. He was C-Sec, one of the best. I grew up hearing about his accomplishments or seeing his picture on the vids after a big arrest. He's taking my resignation pretty hard. I... He's not impressed that you're going after Saren? My father's a C-Sec man to the bone. Do things right or don't do them at all, he says. He thinks I'm being too rash, too impatient. He's worried I'll become just like Saren. He actually talked me out of becoming a Spectre when I was younger, for the same Ooh. reasons. You were asked to be a Spectre? Well, I was targeted as a possible Spectre candidate. 
like me and about a thousand other Turian military recruits. I could have received special training, but my father didn't like it. He despises the Spectres. He hates the idea of someone having unlimited power with no accountability. He wouldn't like you, Commander. No offense. Uh, he's like the CSEC uh, chief, right? Spoken like a true CSEC officer. Yeah, it's a speech I've heard one too many times. But Saren's not going to play by our rules, CSEC's rules. If you want to nail Saren, you need to send someone who isn't restricted by policies and procedures. You're a quick learner, Garrus. We'll beat him at his own game. It's the only way to stop someone like him. I'm right behind you, Commander. In this case, it was okay to do Renegade. He's more in, he's more like uh, accepting Renegade choices, I think. Uh, okay, let's talk to uh, Ashley first. Commander? What's your opinion of the last mission? Not sure I buy Dr. Tassoni's story about her and her mom not talking. They're family, right? I'm not sure I believe it either. It's better to have her where we can see her. That makes sense. Too bad those ruins got destroyed. I mean, they lasted thousands of years. That's impressive. What's your opinion of the last mission? Oh, not sure I buy sorry. Dr. Tassoni's story about her and her mom not talking. I'm not sure I that believe it. Too bad those ruins got destroyed. I mean, they lasted thousands of years. Do you have a few minutes to talk? One-on-one? -on -one? Sure. I, I was hoping to get a minute of your time off the record. Is this duty related, Chief? No, ma'am. Well, maybe. I, I know things are different aboard the Normandy, but uh, I'm I'm concerned about the aliens, Vicarian and Rex. Mm -hmm. With all due respect, Commander, should they have full access to the ship? You don't trust their motives because they're not human. This is the most advanced ship in the Alliance Navy. I don't think we should give them free reign to poke around the vital systems. Engines, sensors, weapons. That's enough, Chief. You always second-guess your superiors? Ma'am, no ma'am. I'm sorry, I was out of line. I'll get back to my duties, Commander. Okay, let's talk to Rex. So, we've got Saren on the run. It won't be long now. Saren's good, but I'm better. Good. He's rotten. To the core. I could tell as soon as I met him. Oh, okay. More info, please. Why didn't you tell me this sooner? I would have if I thought it was important. I'll decide what's important. Now tell me how you know Saren. This was a while ago. A bunch of mercs were bragging about a job out near the edges of the Terminus systems. They said it paid well and the boss was never around to ride them. They said he was looking for more men, too. So I checked it out. I didn't know Saren was openly recruiting mercs. It wasn't that open, and he only showed his face once. We'd been raiding ships in the area for months when we took out this massive cargo freighter. Our biggest haul yet. I was on board checking bodies for valuables, looking for some extra credits. That's when I saw him. What did Saren want with the ship? I don't know what he wanted. He was just moving through the ship, watching. A couple of the mercs called him by name, but he never spoke to them. Never spoke to anyone. I had a really bad feeling about him, so I got the hell out. Didn't even wait to get paid. What kind of cargo was the freighter carrying? What was Saren after? I don't know. All I saw on that ship was food and medical supplies. There were some basic weapons, but nothing big. If there was anything of value on that ship, I didn't see it. That's why I didn't mention it sooner. Whose yeah. ship was it? There was a Volus trading vessel. Big one. Lots of guards. But they were no match for us. That's the only time you saw him? Yeah. 
Didn't even know who he was. Still wouldn't if I hadn't joined up with you. But my instincts were right. Every other merc on that mission turned up dead within a week. Every damn one. Are your oh. people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. I think we had that before, but I'm just lots of sure. species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. We're not settlers. We're warriors. We want to fight. So we leave. Hire ourselves out. And most of us never go back. Yeah, we had that uh, jellyfish thing already, so. So long, Rex. Shepard. Okay. All right, let's get ready on the CIC. And then we will finish off. Let's have a quick look what we have. Um, still got the minerals, there's a lot to go on. Got the sorry writings. Yeah, we have to, when we when we are back at the citadel, we can do that. Actually, we will go to. I think we will go to the citadel because there are some quests. I think once you have finished one of those main quests, so it could be good to go um, to go back to the citadel. Yeah, okay, we have to talk with them anyway. Yeah, so that's what we, what I'm gonna do. Uh, next episode, we'll go back to the Citadel. Uh, maybe he has something to say to Yes, Commander. No, okay. Carry on, Presley. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so thanks for watching again, everyone. I uh, hope you join me in the next episode where we go to the Citadel. Uh, probably do some side quests and then it's probably uh, planet discovery I want to finish off some systems before I uh, do the next uh, main mission so that's what's planned for the next one thanks for watching again and see you at the next one have fun and bye bye like always